explain what we're doing now. Not running yet. Where are we at? What are we doing? Pull the path. Tell you what, it's a lot better fun getting fat than it is getting thin. I'm <laughs> fucking fucked. 10k, when's this? I think it's 22nd of June or something. I bought my big mouth again, huh? Day one, always the hardest. Done and dusted. Tough. Yeah. Tougher than you thought it was going to be. The first hundred bundles that we sell this month, you'll receive a raffle ticket in it, which will draw live. We'll keep you posted on it all the time. The prize is. A signed Tyson Fury glove. We got this off him myself. Wilder needs one huge bingo punch. It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit. Because if you're willing to go through all the battling you got to go through to get to where you want to get, who's got the right to stop you? I mean, maybe some of you guys got something you never finished, something you really want to do, something you never said to somebody, something. And you're told no, even after you pay your dues, who's got the right to tell you that? Who? Nobody. It's your right to listen to your gut. It ain't nobody's right to say no after you earn the right to be where you want to be and do what you want to do. And that's life. The only thing I'm asking you guys to leave on the table is what's right. I'm a true champion, a true warrior. I went to Germany to fight Klitschko. I come to America to fight Deontay Wilder. The biggest comeback, not in boxing history, in sports history, from a man that's come back from hell. And it's fine. I was down on my back, and I rose to my feet on the brink of defeat, because I am the champion in my heart. Absolutely. And I should have won that fight tonight. That you can come back and it can be done. Everybody out there who has the same problems that I've been suffering with, I did that for you guys. And if I can come back from where I come from, then you can do it too. So get up, get over it, and let's do it. Seek help and let's do it together as a team. I did it for you guys. Visitors, none of the two points you take tonight in the Roger Movement Tokyo So we're on our way to see what we're going to see today, the BATs Dale. Yeah. I wanted to do I want to deliver this pack myself because since we've been doing Gourmet Protein Company, I keep an eye and I notice everything and Beer's gone out of his way to like um, to help us and help us reach out to new customers, stuff like that. Seems like a really nice woman, so I want to deliver this pack in person and, um, you know, just say thank you and let people know that it's appreciated. And we're aiming to get big with this side of business, but at the moment, we're still small enough to care, which is paramount. Explain for the people who are watching the vlog back what we did yesterday with the podcast. You enjoyed yourself? Yeah, I loved it. You know me, I'm a massive rugby fan anyway, so just like, to ask me to sit down and talk to a nice lad like Luke Gale, who's come off his own back free of charge to try and help me with my business about rugby and just just talk and have a good conversation between two good lads. That like, I'd have paid him. I'd have paid him. I'd have paid him. <laughs> I like all like that. And I think it'll go really well. It'll go really well. It'll be seen in good light. And uh, I'll take my hat off to the lad for helping me out. <laughs> Can we edit that one out? <laughs> <laughs> Tell him you made it to me. It's your choice.
Come on, here we are, lads. If you don't, I'll never speak to her again. <laughs> what a guy! Well, we've come to see Bea Teasdale. She's been really, really nice to me. And I know what a lot you've been thinking, but this is a sports therapy place. Hot tub. So if you've got any aches and pains, Bea's the lady. Apparently she absolutely knocks <laughs> pony out of your life. <laughs> if you've got all wrong with her, she's your lady and she supports us, so we're going to support her. Thank you. And that's it. <laughs> up on obviously I'm from Morley but the mining community bear in mind I don't really know too much about it but from what I can gather a lot of them were paid very very good wages and a lot of them got paid out and like that house that we delivered to there you know just it was a terror you know like a, a through terrace they didn't like get the money and then get the payout and then blow it all a lot of them were just happy with what they've got and what, what, one thing I like about around here is you, you know a lot of people you, you look at them and you think they, they might look like they haven't got no, but a lot of them have got an absolute fortune in bank and yeah. they've settled for what they've got. And sometimes I'm a little bit guilty of my own ambition, where I just want more and more and more and more. And that almost happened when we, we had like six shots at one point. Just keep going, keep going. And you can learn from people like these that sometimes small, less is more, do you know what I mean? The, the, the very humble set of people and people from Leeds often like yeah whatever however they'll they'll stereotype people from over here but some very very good people around here and the, I can me personally I can learn a bit from them you know I think they're, they're quite alright a lot of them I'm sure there's some that's done all the money in but a lot of people there you give me a massive lump of money now that's like a year's wages first thing I do is try and get a bigger house or whatever these have sell for what they've got, got a right few quid in bank. That's why they're easy to trade with. And, you know, they've got ex, what's it called, expendable cash. <laughs> I've got him there. 18 minutes gone, still nil nil. Strachan's corner finds the head of White. Dorigo! Tony Dorigo. <laughs> Tony Dorigo. Tony Dorigo. What a player legend. Player. Yeah. There, wait, Rose, if you want your ham cut feet. There'll be nobody in that shop who can cut ham for them. Load of rubbish. <laughs> Absolute load of rubbish. Oh, what we got here? What's it say? Like your ham thickly sliced. Just ask. No. Just ask Phil. There's nobody who has to go to White Rose then now and see if we can ask somebody. Let's go something. ask at White Rose. Let's go find. Can I have some? In the thick of it, Leeds City Centre. Could you live in the city? Would you ever do any time if you had. I've done some artists growing up on that, yeah. Yeah. But it'd be interesting. You'd never be shy of things to do. There'd always I know something. loads of people in town, so yeah. Could be dangerous for you, though, I think. Very, 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 very dangerous. Go missing for seven days. Well, yeah, yeah. Just going out for a minute, love. Goodbye. See you next about four days later. Interest me. I've never lived in the city, mate. Never done anything like that. I moved away from city, but it's good. Been a Neil's fruit and veg. One of my best pals, Neil from Market. Got a big catering, catering place there. Does all pubs, bars, restaurants, nursing homes. He's got a big business. All built out of Leeds Market, him and his dad. Yeah, so we just, where we've just been. 
at the Leeds United Football Club store. Got some retro shirts that Tony de Rigaud wear. We're going to get him to sign these. We're either going to auction them off for charity or we'll do something with them, that's for sure. How you came to be? We had talked a little bit before, like oh, right. you've been called the prodigy. That's yeah. been your name. How did it come to be? My, my dad first met Phil when I first moved to Cherwell, and I was 13 years old. My dad got friendly with Phil in a commercial. He left commercial him club. on my doorstep as in a basket. <laughs> <laughs> um, me and my dad had a big argument. I was in beer garden crying. I was really upset, and Phil just went. You're coming to live with me now. That was it. I put my arm around him and he's been mine ever since. Yes, 14 years. I was 14 years of age. Started working Saturdays. School, not really for me. I didn't get on with school. And that were here? You did it here, 14? Uh, no, Leeds Market I started. Only when he, on his first shop, you know, the, the little one on Butcher's Row. Um, just just shortly after I started, we opened the one on Top Row. And then we moved to Jewsbury and yeah, basically grown up. He's been with me every step of the way as Ryan. He goes oh, weird with every now and again and we just have to clip him and bring him in line. But That's uh, what that's what real dads are for, isn't it? <laughs> he's like he's like my son. If if Carlsberg did sons, you'd, you'd have a Ryan.